different word in a certain way. And what I'd like you to do is uh, scoot in a little close and put it in a semicircle here. You need a clean space right here. So the, the terms I'm going to use in this next few minutes are fluidity, uh, substance, and listen. And just be, uh, I know it's going to be hard, but just be a little bit up there. So if we get that, we'll uh, type it. Type it. So I'll, I'll take one here, and, and there's not a lot of motion. Now, if you start to relax, I'll take one here. See that? You want to see what I'm talking about? It's holding me. Even that whistle a little bit. Yeah, the more he relaxes, the more he becomes like, yeah, he becomes a mold of jelly. Okay? And I jiggle him here, the whole thing will jiggle. Right? So, in order to help him become more relaxed, if there's an area that doesn't jiggle as much or seems a little less fluid, I'll actually jiggle that area a little bit. See, if, if he's really jello, the whole thing will go. I feel like right now it's a little bit in the, in the back of the neck here. Not quite getting the toes, but a little bit. And then I might go down and I might deal with the feet just a little bit. Now, um, let's do this. So what percentage of the human body is water? 90, 70, 90, around 90, 90, right here, 95. Okay, 70 over here. Hmm? 94, 95, okay. So, Somewhere in that sense of it. Really and truly, uh, well over 50% of the ones in our idea. So I don't know exactly, but, but if, if you could see him in the water, and you jiggle any part of the cup, all the water in the cup should jiggle. Okay? So uh, this is simply an exercise to help us relax and become more, more fluid. Understood? We have a partner, jiggle them. When you leave, don't tell anyone what you do. Kind of, I mean, it's nice to have a partner do it and let go and really feel it, but I think to some degree we could 
play with fluidity ourselves. Now, you may notice there are certain areas that you're tighter and more rigid or more fixing, but we'd like to have a more fluid flow. Uh, I train with a, a guy who teaches Chinese arts, and um, he used to do karate and the kind of quality of the you know, water or stone and real pop and solid and whatever. Thinking that his Chinese had a total relaxation. And uh, and he's he's clear that he gets much harder than than anyone who does that type of style. And demonstrated it is that the only Caucasian ever went open tournament in China. The judges said that it was disappointing because no one would use it. It's very, very good. And and he emphasizes again and again what you feel is weak or relaxed or something like that is the is the channel to keep it flow through. And the more you effort, tense for accomplishing something, the less the key can get through the job. Does that kind of make sense? So in a sense part of why we center it because we're off center, we have to hold ourselves. And part of our key is used up holding ourselves, because if we let go, we fall. But if we're centered, then there's a, a fluidity that's possible. Okay? Let's take it one more stance and stand up. See if you can keep your fluidity while you stand. Certainly can you stand in a fluid manner. All right. Now, the next word I use is substance. Okay. So if you're fluid and you're aligned properly, your substance becomes a power. Okay. Your, your substance is what's behind your strike here. All right. You have no substance, there's no, there's no power to it. You hit him with a feather, you know what it's going to do. It's your substance. You make a little bit of sense. Now, what happens commonly when we go to do our throw or something, that's what I was saying about being, being in touch with yourself, is we kind of lose our fluidity, and then we, we give our substance away. And now all this mass that could be used in the accomplishment of the task is now something that is working against us. Am I making sense? But if you're sub stance, if you're connected beneath where you stand, playing the word, but I hope it helps. Pour your weight down and there's something there. Now you can take your weight and do something with it, and it works for you rather than against you. you play with that a little bit? Just play with the idea of you know, this, this kind of move. This kind of move. So if you're here, you're using up your key to maintain your substance, your mass. But if you're here, your mass will do the technique for you. Just play with moving a little bit with your substance. You might even play with kind of throwing it away a little bit and go back and forth with things too. Just to move on your own technique. And maybe I can't even get it or not, but I'm not listening. But if I'm listening to Mike, I'll know what he wants to talk about. I'll know which direction he wants to go. I'll be in relationship to what his key is saying. I'll be able to hear the whisperings of the eye to come. Right? My listening is weakened tremendously if I don't have my substance, because now all my keys used up trying to maintain myself and my balance and whatnot. But as soon as I retain my substance, I can listen to him much better. And I think you can picture, you know, uh, how much work it would be to move this much mass around against him. On the other hand, if you can work with him, he becomes much more willing to himself. So if I resist him, if I don't listen to what he's saying, I, I just want to talk and he wants to talk, I escalate the conflict between us. But if I can listen to him, a certain kind of harmony just naturally shows up. Someone says to you, you're an idiot. Go ahead, you're an idiot. Somebody says to you, you're an idiot. You say, well, why do you do so? Tell me why. Well, I mean, what is it that you're experiencing? In terms of, and why is that important to you? And listen, and listen. And eventually, they may start to listen themselves too, and realize that you know you never know if it's projection or insight. Most of what we say, we're talking about ourselves, and then they'll start to hear it, but they'll never hear it. You come up. I'm trying to take this off the net. I would say that what we're talking about includes our life. It's not separate from our life. So. Double check, they grab the, you know, fluidity goes away, go back, just go back to your fluidity. Double check that you're connected to something deeper or more, if you have substance, and then listen. Fluidity, substance. Now my, my comment is, have you ever had anybody write that, uh, I don't know, uh, what's the term here? Um, 
you know, angry at you, unload on you, I mean, you know. and, and if you could, just sit there for a few minutes. And how long do you think? You stupid idiot. You're really dumb. You're the worst person in the world. How long do you think you do that? You know, three minutes? Five minutes is a very, very long time. Although, I did have one of the business guys at work that said, you can't go for four hours. The guy just told me. But he didn't fight back. He didn't argue with me. Just listen. Four hours is no, really four hours. At the end of four hours, he said, he and the guy were just absolutely And he didn't do anything. Just listen. So sometimes, sometimes, you know, you can hear him immediately. And sometimes you can't. But if you just keep listening, but don't lose don't lose your fluidity don't lose your substance that's where your power comes from or I shouldn't really say that I said that's where that's how the power of the universe comes through you fluidity substance is stronger and listen Now, don't mind if you give me a little bit of a hard time, which I want. And I start to listen, and, uh, and then right there I hit this, he starts to tighten up on me. Well, I just want to, you know, let him have it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why is this so funny? <laughs> so, so all I can do is acknowledge that. Huh? And I don't think it's going to go away. I don't think, oh, now that I know that, I won't be like that anymore. I don't think that's true. I think that what it says to me is, when I, now, what happened? My fluidity went away. So, again and again and again, fluidity. Fluidity, substance, listening. I don't know how many of you work in sales, but there's no better way to sell somebody than Listen to what they want. Give them what they want. Fluidity, substance, and listen. And I think, like I was saying with the that maybe you can overpower them. But I think both of you should know that you are. And when your fluidity and substance and listening is there, I think you know it too. Any questions? Got the game? And again, you know, you, you run into those people who do need acupressure. pressure. <laughs> what I say, basically speaking, um, you listen to them long enough, you start to understand. Questions? Okay.
So, uh, again, a lot of it is based on the awareness. You ever had a situation with somebody where it was really uptight and you finally just said to them, God, I'm really uptight with you. And then it <coughs> starts. Just saying what it is, just giving us what it is. It's very, very, very powerful. Um, it's really what it's about. It's being here with what it is. I found actually getting close. I mean, uh, most of the time the techniques are very, uh, well, you can focus them outside of you. Like, you know, all the techniques are here at arm's length. A couple of times, Pat actually got around behind me, bear hug, or in front, came straight in and grabbed, and, and that closeness sort of, um, it's a total different sensation of, you know, not being able to do your sort of theoretical flow in front of mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. um, and it made it quite different to operate in that position. Mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. it, it's, uh, life doesn't always go like you didn't expect it. Like, it always can't the way it's going You know, market doesn't always move the direction you want. <laughs> Inside our firm, we uh, really concentrate on figure time movement and worry me a little bit because uh, it seems very stiff and rigid and you lose the style. So, uh, these exercises this morning, um, uh, you see that there's a, a softening in your technique as well. You can still extend, but be aware of the person. So you, if you think of fluidity, you can still be extending without having a block. Yeah, I mean, what's more powerful than the flow, flow of a river? Flow of water, you know, the, the uh, fire holes. You know, it's completely fluid. If you've ever been hit by one, it doesn't feel like it. You know? And, and the, really, along Mike's story, if you just stay with your fluidity, water wears away rock. And it really will change something. Uh, and, and the problem, I think, is, is we try it for a minute, and then, and then we somehow we change. And we think we're still doing fluidity, but we're not. And so fluidity, we say fluidity doesn't work, but I think we've lost it. And, and fluidity can be something other than what you think it is. Just like Kino Nagari and any of the others. Uh, so I think my mind listening to what the other person is saying to me through the body, I'm understanding things that I only pretend to understand before. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, and I do believe, I mean, that, that word easier, it's easier to understand people if we listen to them. You know? I was one of those, you know, God gave us two ears and one mouth, that should tell us something. <laughs> I, I often felt that you could feel or you knew where the weak point was, but your physical makeup made it very difficult to get into that position. You and I will be twisted up trying to get there. Right, right. So again, come back and say, it's really about feeling better. So if you start giving away what you feel because you know that you're a white husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, client, whatever, who gay, um, who would like you to do something different, then you start abandoning your own spirit. Or the sense they says something, so you think, well, that really sounds wrong to me, but I'll do it anyway. You know, you've lost connection to where the power came from. My sense is, and again, we're here training. We're not on the street right now. So we've got time to say, well, let me go back to a little more fluid and substantive listening. And usually another doorway starts to open up there. So uh, it's a hint that we're close, but a sense they said even slightly apart from the way it's in the moment. Right? So they're just, they're messages. The whisperings of the eye keep coming. When we start to feel, see, this is wrong. You're right. Now, it doesn't mean that the concept is wrong. It means the way you're applying it needs to be more aligned with the universe itself. If we can hear it that way, if we can giggle or laugh or somehow not shame ourselves about being wrong so that we can go ahead and make the adaptation, I think we can learn to go and develop beautiful doorways and continue to open into infinity. Um, so it's just a matter of being able to stay and stay with your practice the moments that it feels like it's not working. Give it a chance. And obviously it's not going to be the moments that it feels like it's not working. Give it a chance. And obviously on the street you can't do that. That's why we come into a special place. That's why we add the floor so we can learn and make mistakes and not be perfect and improve and polish our spirit through practice. How can the, the difference closing my eyes 
and uh, somehow I was using the one shortcut, but um, just taking away one sense um, in trying to, uh, as my partner said, the, the, the irony is that when you're not trying to find the path, um, how do you know it's not there? How do you know it is there? And uh, closing my eyes sort of somehow made it easy to, to detect where that was going. Because we have such an idea of how it should be, what should happen, well, we know that maybe if we got our hand here or here, there's a technique or something. We've got all these concepts getting in our way. When we close our eyes for a minute, uh, we don't know where this or that is on the body. So we just have to feel. Now, again, I don't think the answer is to blind ourselves. You know, just, you know, like, when someone's going to go, oh, well, you shouldn't look then. You know? Well, no. Let's go ahead and close our eyes as a training exercise to get deeper and deeper into feeling. Like we laid down and got fluid. Then we practice standing up. How much that fluid is going to be in? Then we would practice, once I'm really in feeling, now can I open my eyes and stay in feeling, or does it draw me out of feeling? And then that would be the next level of the exercise, would be to stay in feeling with your eyes open. But in very good, <coughs> if you're having trouble, it really helps. It really is a good uh, support in this process of shifting into sensing or awareness. I noticed that. Um, when the blending happened um, and the energy really flowed, there was a tremendous feeling of um, freedom and joy that came from that. Okay, so that's what I was saying about filling the world with this kind of spirit. If we'll operate from this space, we'll give it a chance. And I think, um, if I talk about Canada, think, about a sense of filling his body with this golden light. I think that's close. It may not be at his level, but I think it's the right direction. Just an opinion, just you know. I haven't experienced the golden lights yet, but um, I'm accustomed to stopping the technique and starting over again if, if there's a blockage. So in order to maintain fluid, you just stop the technique and start over again, get them to move. But I was interested as you said, to apply that idea of fluidity to a hard grip, something very solid that I'm not accustomed to, and to look at it as a process. Very similar to your idea, rather than a solid thing that you have to do. Did you get some of that? Yeah. yeah. Because um, you know, E equals M C squared. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> it's all flow. All matter is energy. That's what that's what that that's what that tells us. Now we need to um, go into the experience of energy. And sometimes when we hit that resistance, we come back into matter ourselves. But if we go back and know that inside that matter is a flow of heat. And, and I think you'll find that the tension exists. That, that even the most stubborn person, if you just can, I thought Mike was beautiful, you just can stay with your own fluidity, that your vibration, and, and not resist them or force them, but that your vibration will begin to affect them and they will, they will start to remember that they're spirit too and they're the love of God since we're a Christian church. This would be what's happening when you're on Yeah, we were talking about uh, sometimes, you know, somebody will say something to you, you'll go, well, did you mean God? Said, well, not quite. I meant more like that. Oh, why well, does he mean like that? Well, that's closer, but what I really meant was he was there. And it takes three or four or something. And then they go, yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. So that's when the bouquet just falls, melts. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what's the rush? You know, where do we have to go? Yeah. Enjoyable practice? Yeah. 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 Um, how, about, how about the frustrations or those kinds of questions? Is anybody having those? You want to play with anything up there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you wouldn't bring that up. <laughs> Two, but I felt comfortable. <laughs> but I know. Good, good. Just keep that feeling. 
<laughs> yeah, well, we'll go to the back and do some more. <laughs> but, but what I would say is, like closing the eyes, this flu fluidity, it's a training exercise. I'm not opposed to strength. I have nothing against strength. Some of my best friends are strong. <laughs> <laughs> but, but with no strength, you couldn't turn the doorknob. You couldn't stand up. You know what I mean? But strength without intelligence, strength without sensitivity, Anybody who's just in a strength walk out through the wall when you leave the room today. So turn the door now and walk out through the door. Use the strength intelligently. And those of you who are strong, you, you know, you should be thankful. You should be appreciative of the strength that you have. You should bring it to bear in harmony with the energy of the universe. And, and we'll all grow by it. But if you're just a bull in a china shop, you'll pay a big tab at some point. And so, so again, I, I, I work this, uh, they talk take off power, don't force, or something like that. It, strength is not bad. Uh, in the Japanese style, of course, uh, they don't talk much. It's, it's doing, it's not talking about, it's not, you know, what we're doing. But I feel like we can use the words very well. And maybe we can enhance our understanding of the word. And they can be used, the strength can be used, but it's got to be used in service of the spirit, in harmony with the spirit. So, for those of you who have your strength, you know, bless you, you know, use it, but use it well. Use it, use it for the good of humanity or something like that. And use it for the growth and development of your children, and your uke, and your, and your friends. And your... It's good to be strong. I found very little frustration because I wasn't actually trying to achieve it. Now, that sounds like sort of a simple truism in a certain way, but, but, um, we were so set on making something happen, you know, ma making enough money. Of course, we're not eating. It's another story. But, mm -hmm. but you know, as if that that you knew that was going to do. You know, slow down for me. See what the universe has to teach you, and then you'll find that what it's teaching you will be something you can use to make money, or to get your book in, or to develop a new scientific instrument, or whatever you're into. You your program, new song, whatever you new painting. Yeah, I think that, that not having a preset, being much more of a student than a teacher, that you're learning from the UK how to move. You're not trying to teach the UK how to move. You're learning from the universe how to be. You're not trying to teach the universe how to move. Yeah. Good, good attitude. But again, that doesn't mean, oh, I don't know anything about, you know, I'm not here anymore. I no longer have a substance. I'm, I'm fluid. I'm just jealous. There's a certain fluidity that's great, but without the bones, we would be... Don't misunderstand it. Soft is nice, hard is nice. That was a <laughs> Can I get away with that? <laughs> Anything else? Hang on, I'm going to leave it with an eye. You can't yeah, you're doing the technique, but what's the technique? Is the technique throw them on the ground? Oh, we think it is, don't we? I mean, we slip into it, don't we? But, you know what I say about that is, I throw them on, they just get out again. <laughs> I mean, as if that were going to answer the world. The technique to me is, it's in come up. Now, Uke and Nagi are both practicing center or fluidity. They're both practicing ground or substance. They're both practicing flow and blend or listening. What's the difference? It's incumbent on Nagi to improve the situation. What you're learning is to reconcile the world and make human beings one family, to make the world a better place to live, to uh, serve the completion of the universe, all those things in a sense. But we think it's to throw them down on the ground. Let me, let me ask you to sit for one more minute with me. And I'd like to go around the room and go as quickly as we can here. And you may find this interesting, but my question to you is, why do you study Aikido? What do you want from Aikido? And or, you know, why did you come to the camp? Or why did you come to class? Okay? Anybody want to start? Let me just go around. To grow. To grow. Thank you. And, and what is that say? Well,
I think it, it, it has changed, it has improved. Improvement, self improvement. Thank you. There are self improvements. I've always thought there's something more I can avoid being the safest part of existence. Okay, something about me, growth development. Something more. Make something up. <laughs> and, 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 you know, uh, so is the basketball court, so is the movies, so is the television, so why do you come back to this? I forgive you for pressing, but I make something <laughs>
Okay? So what I would say is um, our thought is incoherent. Our minds are incoherent, meaning we do not produce what we want. The next minute, we're out there struggling. Now, it's good that we do because, you know, sing a little higher and if you're further away from what you want, it would be more obvious. After you struggle for a while, you finally relax. You use up your energy, you finally relax. Okay? You relax, your key starts to flow, your key starts to flow, your authenticity shows up. You start to be who you really are, you, you know, you just enjoy yourself. Okay? So, I'd like to take, take a few more minutes here, play with what we're playing with, and double check at what point in this process do I run into this problem and start to think like, I'm on the line, I've got to do something. I've, I've got to, I don't know, you, you make that, so I've got to win here, I've got to throw them down, you know, you know. You guys do whatever you want. Well, I'd like to enjoy myself more. It starts to fall. What I'm trying to say to you is, it is easier than you think. You know more than you think. It's inside you. All you have to do is keep the channel open. And when you start to shut the channel down, just keep the channel open. Okay? So, uh, and, and is there anybody who's not here for self-defense? Nobody minds if you learn a little self-defense, right? It doesn't hurt to have a little capability. And is there anybody who, who can't see in this, this kind of a movement? The potential for that. There's a thousand of those in every move that we do. And as you start to get into the flow, you know, you can think about those kinds of things. All right? And my sense is once you train the system, thank you, man. Forgive me for my being such an angry old man. <laughs> it takes very little to arm the system once you're in that state of fluidity, substance, and listening. Very little. Is there anybody here who doesn't know kicking the groin? Is there anybody here who doesn't know sticking the finger in their eye or in their throat? It takes nothing to arm the system. To turn this into self-defense is not. And at some point, you hit a certain level, you want to take somebody and they'll practice looking at some of those openings and adding that to just a few minutes, a few minutes, a few weeks, done. Okay, so I'm not throwing that away, I'm saying it's not available to us, we're not there. But that's not what we came for, so let's not get hung up in stories about I'm going to lose here. Am I learning about myself? Well, am I paying attention? Am I enjoying myself? Well, am I feeling better? Am I relaxing? Am I... Well, Sensei said, I can do is peaceful reconciliation. Peaceful reconciliation means Allowing the completion of one to be so good. <laughs> Everything you said here, that's a piece, if not all. That's a piece of your be so mission. So I, again, George, allow the completion of that. Let yourself enjoy yourself. Let yourself have fun. Enjoy good. Relax. Flow. Enjoy the people. Do what you came for. The self-defense will be good. You hang in, you train, you know, you still won't be able to beat Arch Arnold Schwarzenegger or whoever it is, but you know, I can fight with all sorts of things, so why worry about it? <coughs> and whatever level, your, your skills and your ability will develop. You'll be more capable than you would have if you had to train. So that will happen naturally. Don't worry about that. Don't worry if you're happy. Enjoy your training. Let's go. I'm 
bags up. Hey. Watch yourself. And then we have to say, can you remember about yourself? 
Watch what's going on in your system during that time. And you know, if you're making us, well, that was a good one. Oh, that wasn't a good one. Oh, uh, oh I was thinking about something else. So, oh, God, I should have done better. That's what I mean by yourself. Let's just start with that simple exercise. Put one foot forward. So that would be the foot that was closest to me if he was back. So, so I'm going to come in and do this. Okay. What I'd like you to do as the attacker is exactly that. If you can, as the attacker, uh, try to give no intention whatsoever, and then go. Okay. Don't be sending bullets of key at him continues. There'll be nothing and go. Also, don't stand here and go. I want you to take a step and go. There's a concept in IT called ma'ai. I, just like I and IT, ma'ai is space. It means a harmonious space. And the space that we have right now is a harmonious space. And the reason that it is, is because until I move my back foot or my front foot, I can't reach it. So my front foot stays here. It doesn't matter if I can kick through steel or punch through steel. It doesn't make any difference until I close this distance. Now he's now he's in trouble. Once you start to get that feeling, they can never close that distance. And again, once they're inside that distance, you have got to be fast. But from here, they've got to take that step, and that fraction of a second is the difference between life and death. Ma, harmonious space, harmonious distance. So we're practicing that. You should always know when someone closes that ma. Okay? Yeah. You, <laughs> you should have that sensitivity. You should have that proximity sense. But no, it's because, you know, if, I mean, if somebody you love, that's one thing. But if somebody where you feel the vibes are funny, just, I had a situation with this. Just maintain the distance, which meant either you commit to attacking or you can't close the distance. So you really had to go for it. Or not. Yeah. Information. I don't know what I'm looking for either. So uh, if you find it, well, uh, that, that could be important. Who, who knows what's important? What did you know? Uh, There's a definite sending of bullets, as you put it. Well, oh, since you're talking about spiritual bullets. <laughs> There's this a few hot bullets. So tuning into that key is a very, very essential part of our practice. You know, who is telling about the key to I mean, not just in New Zealand, but around the world. Don't believe it.
we can we say I do, right? We can get back in harmony with the energy. And again, it's something that it's a fundamental that we can't we cannot practice it too much. Anything else you notice? You start to you start reacting to the other people around you as well. The other people start moving. You feel like what really focus on on the individuals. Yeah. yeah. And in a sense, that works for us because uh, our life is like that we're distracted by a lot of stuff, and so we lose attention on what's going on for ourselves. Uh, a lot of people don't know how they feel. You ever, you ever come out of a movie, you know, and you think, God, that, that was a pretty good movie, you know, and you're with a friend, and, and you're about to say, well, I, I, I kind of like it, and they go, God, that look. And, and so you kind of go, well, uh, should I say that? You didn't think that yeah. So we should know that we're affected by other people's energy. And the more we get into our own center, the more authentic and natural we So I go, okay, go ahead. <laughs> all right? Got it? Uh, it doesn't need to be all that much to up it. And where you, you start to see what the next level of reaction is. Then imagine what we'll be able to knife in the back. But uh, it's enough to sing. And it doesn't have to hurt. Got it? You know, those of you who are into that S&M stuff, got to take your heart. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Rocket from the S&M. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. Thank <laughs> <laughs> right, you again. Nothing, nothing, something. Not a whole lot of, of preliminary stuff. Uh, although, on the street or uh, in, out, out in the world or something like that, you will. There will be a build-up for hours. You know, see me. But I'd like it to nothing, and when you go, I might go as fast as you can. And I can just feel myself going, oh God. <laughs> so that's what I want. I just want to walk. And what happens when I'm anticipating something? Like my shoulders come up, I kind of punch it, I'm bending forward, I'm, I'm tightening down. And I see all that. Now, if I know that's going on, I can start to, well, let me. Because, like you said, you know, it's, it's a handle. <coughs> I mean, for a second it's going to hurt, but I don't have to spend five minutes beforehand feeling like this. <laughs> Got the game? As fast as you can get there, okay? Please. <laughs> yeah, well, since they said, you know, people think I don't get off center. But I just correct sooner, and I just correct faster. All right, so let's set it up, Mike. Let's do one more. Let's set it up and let you move now. Whenever you feel like it, even if they're not ready to do anything and you feel like moving, it's a free country, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Happy game? Does that feel a little better? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, so you're walking down the street, think maybe you feel somebody. Yeah. 
uh, you know, you're going to go to one, or you're, you're pulling up somewhere, and you're, you're going to get out of your car and just get the feeling like, ah, nah. And then suddenly he goes, oh, well, I don't want to be paranoid, or racist, or skip, whatever, you know. And you start cutting down on that intuition. Now, I don't mean for you to be at uh, the point where every thought that comes into your mind, you start reacting to it. The point is that you're centered and grounded. We're reacting to a field of information, not to ideas. Okay, so we're trying to make a distinction for ourselves. When do you trust the intuitive messages? And when do you know that they're just uh, thoughts? Yeah. Okay? Are these thoughts or feelings that people get? You talk about them as though they're always thoughts, but I wonder if sometimes they are actually feelings. Then it gets transmitted to a thought. Yeah, I would say that that's 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 good distinction. Or we might even say it's a sense that you have. We try to look for another word. Just get a sense that maybe you shouldn't go in that bar, or you sense that you shouldn't go to that party, or sense that it's time to leave now. now my story about Marsh Starks, uh, you've left the bar before he actually realized he wants to get you. That's how you do. All right, I guess we've got the distinction. Let's go one more time with this. Uh, Uke again, uh, as best as you can, try and give them that jolt of it as you go. So if you're giving them a lot, it's, it's less clear for the exercise. In real life, I mean, that, you kind of feel like when somebody and you should be leaving the bar already. You say, oh, well, I'm just being paranoid. You know, we had one of these with my, uh, some of the art, my brother was in a coma. And I did a Nikio on him and woke him up. And they did a curtain accident. And then I snuck him out of the hospital to go see this guy play music. And we're there at the bar. And there's a guy who I just get bad vibes off. I don't like it. I don't know what it is. But, you know, I'm there with my brother. And he's trying to enjoy the music. So I'm hanging out. And then I, all of a sudden, I see this guy crowding my brother. He's in a wheelchair, for Christ's sake. So, you know, he was out of the hospital. And I just buy it's not good. And, and, and I have a sense of this guy, he's bragging about he's tough, he's been in Vietnam, he's been killed. And my sense was, uh, I just had this sense that he had screwed up. He had asked a buddy to take one of his patrols, and he screwed up on the his buddy was killed, and he just had some horrible pain inside him. That he was just trying to unload somewhere or other. And I, you know, I just, I see this and I'm, I'm looking at him and I go, I go over, I just kind of insert myself between him and, I'm just interested in music, see, I'm just, and I'm enjoying the music, but I'm just not going to let him hear my brother. And my brother's sitting there with his girlfriend, and, and he says to his girlfriend, he's, he's got to, you know, which is one of the folks. And he's going, well, you're nuts, and you're not seeing your parents. And I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm, I am, I'm right on the edge, I'm thinking like, you know, I don't know how tough this dude is, but the first move he makes, I'm going to take him out. I'm not going to play around my head. As a matter of fact, I talked about shoulder separation, but I hurt my shoulder, so I was not in my best place, so I wasn't going to do anything you know. <laughs> uh, And he's big, you know, he's you know, good six inches taller than me or something like that. He's a little spooky or something. And just, just to add this one more note, which is not related to what we're talking about right now, I just did my ground. And he's trying to bump into me, and you know, he's kind of telling me he's bopping me, he's bumping into me, and I'm grounding, he's bouncing off. <laughs> you know? And there's some, something in him. I knew he really wanted to fight with somebody. He just wanted to unload on somebody. And that, that part of him knew that he shouldn't. Part of him that wasn't really that bad of a person with the pain inside him driving him nuts. But I knew that all it would take him was one spark. And, and we would have been into it. But as long as I didn't spark, the part of him that knew he shouldn't, and the rest of me, would win over the half of him that wanted to. So they just filed out on the way. But basically, it was a sense where, you know, my brother was seeing it, and she's all, oh, no, you're just, you know, whatever, whatever. And, uh, and I, you know, I'm there, and I'm sitting there, and I'm making movies. My dad, I'm thinking, now, let's see now. Uh, me in the hospital. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two in the morning, filling out forms, explaining to the police. I don't really like that. <laughs> and eventually, he bounced off me enough, and he left. And he left angry because, you know, I wouldn't fight him. But, but as a matter of fact, when we, when we now managed to get my brother out, if it had been me alone, I would have left much sooner. I knew it was time to go. My brother was there, I'm proud of him. Right? So somewhere between these stories, what I'm trying to say is you have more, whatever the word is, key or 
intelligence of something than, than we normally give credit to. And I want to start to make a distinction between whatever we'll call them, paranoid thoughts and an actual sense that there's danger. All right? Let's do one more and then we'll do a few techniques off. Okay. <laughs> Okay. 
And, and uh, you know, we do groups like this where everybody attacks and it's a, a group attack. That's, I'm not really playing group attack. I'm just saying, okay, there's a lot of input here and your eyes are closed and you're operating totally from sensing. So I'm going to let it settle down in between and then go. Uh, as you get just a little longer in between, so there's kind of nothing, then one ego. Right? Nothing, one ego.
questions before we go on? What's <laughs> one? Um, you can't throw them if they compensate for your throw. You can't do anything for you either. Right. So the purpose, one of the purposes of this exercise is you have to really put some energy into doing something for you. So you need that energy. Something you had a harder time with, but your attack, I'm sorry, your, your response, when I started to go with it and do a throw or something, was trying to pull your energy away. Well, no, I didn't get you, but it wasn't my job to get you. It was your job to get me. I was asking you to give me some energy. So um, what I'm really saying, go for your throw. Yes, you're going to get thrown. But if you pull your energy out, that's the end of our game. And back to your jiu-jitsu, I'm a hitter kicker. So, um, let's see what we're here. And I start to do, oh, I'm sorry, let's do I start to do my counter to your counter. And if you start to pull your energy back, you create a space between us. That space is the space in which violence happens. So I didn't hit or kick anyone, <coughs> but good chance uh, in a street situation that you would have lost some eyes. Uh -huh. uh, you would have made love with your honey tonight. Uh, those kinds of openings show up. So I want to, you should know that, and we should play with it without hurting each other. You should have a feeling for what happens when, because you know your roommates on the street are not courteous like we are, and don't give such generous attention. But almost invariably. When I go to do my throw, if you start to pull out, I <laughs> just a killer. <laughs> uh, and I mean, at the same time you've seen, I don't really have any intention to hurt anyone. I'm actually I'm a lover, not a fighter. But if you force me to fight against my will, uh, I no longer have any respect for your rights. You violated mine. I don't have any respect for yours. So some of you may not agree with this, and I honor your right to behave in any way that's appropriate to you. But I will tell you that if your life is threatened, it's a choice you'll need to make. You can take your eyes home with you, or they can take yours. Oh, I don't want to hurt them, but I don't want to get hurt. They don't feel that way, or they wouldn't have started. So when I hit that level, I don't have any rules. I don't have any rights or wrongs. I'm looking for whatever I need to do there. And I say this to you because that rut that we did, we're supposed to do a technique. So he starts to come my technique or pull away or do whatever it is or something like that. Well, I'm looking for it to play and flow and whatnot. And that's our practice. But I don't want to get in the habit of that to the point where when he starts to counter my technique here, uh, I feel like, oh, I've got to do a technique. I'm just going to take whatever's there. Uh, and I say this to you because I fear sometimes we get in those rocks, we, we don't feel like we have those open agents. And that's important in terms of if you actually ever are in a position where you need it yourself. Most important, because I sense if our training is good and keep our spirits positive, but what I'm saying is that bullshit. We don't really care about it. It's never going to occur. It doesn't matter. But it ruins the practice. You put me in a position where I can't do my practice anymore. I could kick you, or you could punch me, or you could whatever. But I can't do the practice anymore. If you don't give me a key, I can't do my key. Okay? If you pull your key out, all I've got is your body. If you're threatening my life, I'll take it. Uh, you know, if I can't, I'm not saying it would, but that's, that's where my intention goes at that time. But what, the reason I set this up is because usually, whereas we're stingy with our candy, we're very, we're very generous with our knowledge. <coughs> and then I've got some key that I can play with. So I'm hoping that that clarifies a little where the game is. But it's changing. We're going to counter and do a technique to my technique. So now it becomes a game.
Und dann spucke ich nahe. Nahe. Again, the other theme that I've got going on here is that we're trying to learn to flow. 
We're not trying to win the fight. I mean, maybe you are. We say, do whatever you want. But my sense is, you're trying to learn the flow. So, and then he starts to get into this position with me. Practice flowing with it because, because he's nogging. Now, I start to become nogging. Now, he starts to become nogging again. Now, I start to become nogging again. Uke becomes nogging, becomes Uke, becomes nogging. Are you confused? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I'm Uke. He starts to throw. I start to nog. He starts to throw. Okay? One more? One more. Um, uh, no? You guys are just having too much fun? <laughs> okay. Becomes an Abe. Becomes. Okay. Becomes an Abe. Okay. He comes in all right. Comes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Job here is to be available to, to, to 
be available, but to be more than available. In a certain sense, I'll a, a little what we were doing last week. <coughs> to be particularly honest, but particularly alert. And, and in it, for me, of course, being alert means, you know, reverse the situation. Here's someone attacking me, and I'm going to let them have their throw, so to speak. As if it was so to do Is it, they've got me here, but what could I do? I'm still thinking that way. I may not do anything, but my mind is not asleep. My mind is very... Taking those things, I'm alert and I'm alive. I'm very uh, sensitive to what's going on. And I'm not at all resistant. You know, keep me a little more awake, too. <laughs> okay? So I think we can help build each other up that way. Most of all, what I'm interested in is um, I used to work on Kemi with the principle of, um, you know, it's like, it's like accepting that compliment. The camera is like accepting a compliment. You know, and I don't have this, this thing with people, but they'll say to them, and they say, that's just a statement. Like, say, uh, like he's saying, God, that last one was a great throw, and I think, well, it wasn't that good. You know what they say about a compliment? You just smile and say, thank you. That's the feeling I want. No resistance is okay. How relaxed we can be. Um, who was it said to me yesterday? Uh, he said to me when I was doing the comics, okay, well, I didn't want to do it because everybody who tried to do a technique had to be lost. And I really heard a comment similar to that several times about losing. It's the wrong attitude. Let's do one more. And 
do it at a speed that I can protect myself. Okay? <laughs> and probably speed is the main issue about not hurting me too. All right. Now, because I've said don't hurt me, let's don't be vague or disconnected or somehow anything other than the very best strike you can deliver. Now, um, if I had leaned forward, you'd hurt me now. Okay, so, speed's out of, uh, out, of, out of the range where I would play, because you don't know what they're going to do. In a minute, I, this person's going to respond. Okay. So that's what I'm looking for. So go ahead and do the strike, but just do it at a speed, where if I start to do this, you know, we're going to both be safe. Because you don't know what I'm going to do, and I don't know what I'm going to do, and I want to be free to experiment here. I don't want to have to worry about anything coming out. So, um, at this point, no, I'm, I mean, I still want it to be like this. I'd like it to be, you know, the whole body delivered and the powers there. <coughs> but, but say it, say it, say it, say it, say it, say it. Did I say that? I say it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now, uh, what I'd like you to do is be in a position where when you deliver the strike, you're actually going to touch me and put a little power into it. And again, say it, say it, say it. Okay? So I'm now feeling the strike. Okay? Now, what I'd like to do, and you may want to do one or two first to make sure you're on track with this. Now what I'd like to do is respond to the strike. Okay? Now I want something else. Oh, let's, let's leave the kicks aside. Maybe we'll do a couple in a minute. Let's stay with the hands for a moment. But just Roundhouse, straight punch, face, chest, back, kidneys, whatever. So I can stay for one and feel how the power, how the power is delivered, moving. You know, yeah, it doesn't need to be a lot, but just so your action is not a representation of a strike. It's a strike. It's just done at a speed or, or gentleness that's attempted. Do the same strike again. At a speed that I can handle. Okay? So I'm uke. You understand? I'm not nage. I'm uke. He's nage. He's in effect delivering the power. Uke means the receiver of an attack. Okay? So it also implies falling away from harm. So I'm now going to receive the attack in a way that moves me out of harm. Just go ahead and write from where you are. Just go ahead and, and deliver another one. Something else. Got the game? Yeah. Any questions? Go ahead. The game here I'm attacking you now uh, is I'm going to take all my energy and commit it to one spot. And at the instant that I commit that energy to that spot, no matter what he does, I'm still going right for that spot. So when he moves, I'm still committed to that spot. You know, it's sort of like the showman thing, you move off the line. Well, we're going slow, so now I can do this. <laughs> But if I was going full speed, I don't, I don't think I could, okay? Now, if we go full speed, somebody's going to get hurt. If we go slow, people start wiggling their strike. Can we imitate a full speed attack at slow speed? Right. Am I making sense? <laughs> so, most important is that, that sense that you've got that kind of commitment and you don't bury that. You really, really target your spot the way, <clears throat> the way you would with a death strike, all right? And then let's start to play with the spiritual bullets. Okay? Right. As the uke, you can move before I move if you feel that that second you feel I've committed, go ahead and start your movement, your basic movement. Alright, so I wouldn't wait until the last second. You can strike me here. As soon as I feel the movement start, I'm going to make my move. Okay? Do you understand what we're trying to develop here? I can see. I mean, I'm pretty senior. <laughs> if you're here to learn about yourself, pay attention to those the tendencies and then that. Alright? Right. So again, you know, we know what's coming. Uh, but what we played with yesterday is that we do have a sense of things before the physical. The spiritual body, the hair on the back of the neck, or what that, that, that sense, huh? <clears throat> now, if we refine it a little bit, I think we start to recognize, oh, it's coming circular, it's coming from the right side, it's a downward strike. 
Not that you would say that to yourself, but just a feeling where your body wants to move in this way or that way. I'm just trying to get that, develop that ability to, to sense and move with and then, uh, you know, gradually maybe we can build up a little speed or more intensity and, and have it not go away. But again, the problem is less in terms of the, if you remember the thing from behind us, it, it's less that we can't feel it. We can feel it. It's the, it tends to be more the deer in the headlight syndrome. Right? That, we just clamp down on it or we discredit the feelings that we have. Just trying to get that kind of fluidity. Could we put this together? Huh? Could we put this together with um, the, you know, this, excuse me, this uh, throwing <coughs> process that we did? Can we, can we do both at the same time? Not, not strike and throw at the same time, but, but play with both play with both the striking and the throwing as kind of combination practice. Please. The cause of that. If one needs to freeze, the need to print, where am I going to eat? Where am I going to eat? Get myself kind of figured out and then running out of it.
So um, that's why I'm saying so long in this particular aspect of it. That it's okay. It's okay to get wet. It's okay to get wet. It's okay to eat. It's okay to wet. It's okay to flow. Not like, yeah, sure. I'll blend just until I get control. <laughs> what you're saying is you're going to hold the court. You're going to stay the way you believe the universe is. To me, blending means, yes, I will let go of the way I see the world, and I will change. I will blend with what I'm actually experiencing and let that produce a new way to see the world. And then you know Bartholomew and 500 hats? I'll take that one off and let myself have a new way to see the world. And I'll take that one off. That belief. I'll surrender that. I'll give up that belief or that position. And I'll change the way I am. I'll yield and I'll flow and I'll blend. And I'll let something new show up. Remember those last few hats? The last few hats have better and better. Anything? The doors been open, or rather, we've been pointed before. We've been offered the door knob, <laughs> and there's the keys on the silver paper. Here you are. I'll hold it. No, you, you go. <laughs> shall I? Shall I? <laughs> once, you probably have all done once a technique for a movement that we've all been satisfied, and we felt great. Wow, neat, excellent. I want to do that again. So here is that chance. And what are we doing here? Rick? I'll get it. You, you somebody do it. Um, it's the hesitancy. It's the brand new world. It's all the bits that we're going to be afraid of and we really want. And Neil Thomas didn't come in with the bird before I can go back to plan the cave Don't expect it to change in the next five minutes. But let's heighten our awareness. Let's start to see what's possible. Let's open that doorway a little and see what could come in. Does, does this interest you? Mm -hmm. yeah. so, same tracks. One more time, just a couple minutes. Okay. Uke starts to move faster than Nage. Uh, we'll find some way to punish you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you told me before you came, Michael and I were having this long, worn out situation and I've got heaps of frustration there and I had a feeling I want to stop you this and it's kind of like how I relate to the world. If something frustrating, I'll do something else. But staying with it and it's <coughs> and all of a sudden it, it looks like this. The light went on and it's so simple. I knew what to do straight away. It was really simple and I did it. It's great. Always darkest before the dawn. Anything? Anybody? Anybody just? Yeah. I, I found that um, cleaning the suit of movement was all right, but the linear movement came through it. But obviously, I thought I was handling the, the movement, but I was obviously open for a linear attack. It was easy to pull out. Right. Okay, one thing, one of the things I've got the law particular. I'm waiting for you, like he say, is that um, it's okay to duck sometimes. I mean, you're not allowed to be in over and duck for a long time. <laughs> yeah, Mike was saying too that, uh, how do you say it? Well, the flexibility you use in your back relation is something we just, we say it's an honor, basically. Mm -hmm. Becomes a task that I can rule. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not bend thy spine. <laughs> <laughs> but watch this. I want you to see this. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we put those kind of limitations on what's possible? Now, what I understand in that is, okay, we want to stay, you know, shoulder over the hips. We, we'd like to stay the whole unit connected and balanced and all that, but there's, there's a lot that could happen in this zone that we start to say, oh, no, oh, no, no, well, how do you, no, uh, I hate herbal people. Did you ever try it? No. <laughs>
and leaving it there and not actually setting back in and going to the next movement. Very so, you know, this is kind of one of those ones, and I'll go back to my relationship analogies, but it's like, um, let's talk about somebody else for a minute. <laughs> um, a, a situation where the, the guy just wanted his wife to stay, just wanted her to just stay, just stay, and he drove her away. So, so then there was a suggestion that, well, you know, if it really was okay, whichever, maybe, maybe it'd be okay, there wouldn't be any pressure, maybe she could stay. So then you start doing, well, okay, I don't care if, I don't care if you go, are you gonna stay? <laughs> no, you understand? It's not a trick that you use to get them to stay. It's, it's not, you don't pretend like you're out of control or be in control. You yield control because there is a much higher level of control going on one of the other things I, I mentioned in five is <coughs> new science stuff, they, they realize that the universe is self-organized. Systems are self-organizing. That's what I say. We think if we don't control it, the universe is gonna the universe was fine before you got here and it will be fine when you're gone. You know, why don't you just relax and enjoy it? And no matter what you do here, I don't care how tough or whatever, you're gonna die anyway. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy yourself. <coughs> So, uh, who's, have, who's having kind of a hard time or a little difficulty with it or something like that? Anybody? Oh, good. We got it? Uh -huh. Come on. So, just as an example here, you're Nage Amu.
You want to become fluid? You want to stay with your substance? Correct. Any move that. Or do you want to go with flow? What do you want to practice? Well, I want to practice going with flow. I'm really into ice cream. I love ice cream. I love ice cream. So, Fuke. The islands by roll. So I'm, I'm really trying to help us break out of this mindset that we operate in like a deep canyon with no escape. Yes, you know. My whole sentence is from no open sleep canyon. Can you play this? I just can't become an object. What do you understand differently now that makes it, if it's not just my imagination, it, makes, it seems to make it more okay. Well, try huh? Not try Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a lot more joy. There's, there's not quite so much, uh, uh, not so many boundaries. Uh, I'm sure I say things as many as Okay. Okay. Now we're in the target practice point. Do you know this? Alright. Yeah, and then More free, more free. The restriction thing also. Go ahead. Okay, oh, yeah. you can't figure it out in advance. <laughs> so you gotta go. The restriction was gone when you uh, put the concept of Uchi. Uke Nari. And you really spelled it for me anyway. Go ahead. ABC. Good. That means the confusion was gone and I was really able to play it. Good. Good. <laughs> That's right, you can work for Listen to your Remember that 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 life, whatever we call the outer life, is a mirror of the inner state. The outer conflict is a mirror of the inner conflict. So when there's less internal conflict, there will be less external conflict. Especially for uh, really new Akidoka, you realize how easy and comfortable it is to fall when you relax yourself. And you actually feel yourself relaxing into the fall. The great power of being away. Yeah. It felt like you were a nanny, not just a tough old nanny. I start feeling like I really don't want him to fall. I don't want to. I don't want him to fall. I don't want him to fall. Because there's a lot of <laughs> I used to I used to do a, a storyline that um, because people would, would be you know so intent to get them down or something like that and yeah all right, the idea is that somebody attacked us and we really were the best martial arts in the world the first time they moved they'd be down and, but in real life it usually doesn't go quite that smooth and that easy and the ability to stay and keep flowing so I set up this practice was you know however long the technique lasts is unimportant. But the second your uke falls, there's a sharpshooter that takes you out. <laughs> you're dead. The second he falls, you're dead. And it was kind of just, well, let's enjoy this while we've got it. <laughs> and that's sort of what I'm saying. No matter how tough you are, you're going to die anyway. You, you, you know the, the Zen story about the, the mountains out walking, and he hears a noise in the forest, it's a tiger. And the tiger chases him, he runs, and there's an edge of the cliff, so he, he, he jumps off the edge of the cliff and catches onto a vine, and he looks down below, and there's another tiger circling. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you notice these two little black and white mouths sitting there chewing on the vine. And at that moment he notices there's a strawberry growing on the side of the cliff and he eats it. It was delicious. And the first tiger is birth, the other tiger is death. The black and white are the day and night. Eat the strawberry and enjoy it. It's a very, very different feeling. I'm not sure that it takes any more courage to eat the strawberry than I do, but I think it's about the same from where I am. The strawberry's there, either or not, you're going to die anyway. And I'm not sure. My, 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 my thing. So, but we get so caught up in our fear 
in our anxiety that our life is over. And, and uh, you know, how many variations have you seen of uh, the story of the man in his deathbed who said, God, I wish I had, I had spent more time at the beach. I wish I had, I wish I had, I wish I had. And then I saw another variation and said, you, know, you never hear anyone on their deathbed saying, God, I wish I had spent more time at the office. <laughs> now, we need to do what we need to do. Right? But, but if we miss it in the process, I mean, you'll go to your grave one way or the other. I'm not worried about it. There's only one thing that matters to me, and that's, and that's did I eat the strawberry or not? That's all. I, and, and after I'm dead, I won't care either. But right this minute, that's the only thing that matters to me. I don't even care how long it takes them to eat the vine, how long till I die. But the, you know, same, same, same kind of silliness. I'll tell you what, I'll give you um, two weeks in Bali or 200 years in a Nazi prison camp. What do you want? You die at the end of either one. What do you want? You know what I'm saying? So, but the problem is, see, same thing, we get on these tracks and we're surviving. For what? Well, uh, 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 we must keep our spine straight. We have to survive. Well, you know, we not only don't have to, we might not eat. So, we really have to revamp our thinking if we're going to open some new doorways here. And this is what I really like to do for a few more minutes. Is just notice the process that we go down in the same thought pattern. See, synapses in the brain, the way we think is neuroelectrical, chemical neuroelectrical connections go on here. And once you, once you create a pathway, the energy tends to flow down that same pathway. And it'll keep flowing down that same pathway until you cause yourself to accept the frustration or disturbance of Allowing the possibility of a new pathway, which is much harder, if you will, than going down the same old pathway. Much harder to do what we're doing now than just go in and I show you eight loops and you do over and over again. You know, if, you know obviously, you didn't bring it. the newness of the way you experience it. 